This is Advanced Algebra Lesson 2-4, the graph of y equals kx. We looked at direct variation earlier in this chapter in Lesson 1, and we're going to continue looking at direct variation, but now we're going to look at it in terms of what, it, what we see when we graph it and what the relationship between our graph and the value for k have. To begin our study today, I'd like to look at a situation that was discussed in your reading. It is, it is looking at distance you are from lightning and the time that it elapses before you hear the thunder. This, is, this situation is a direct variation function and it has a formula that corresponds to it. It's d equals 1 fifth t. So what, what that formulation, formula stands for is the distance d you are from a lightning strike varies directly with the time t elapsed between seeing the lightning and hearing the thunder. Here there's a table of values that are generated. So if it takes you five seconds to s see the lightning and to hear the thunder, you then are one mile from the lightning. Another example, if you if time elapses is 20 seconds between the time you see the lightning and hear the thunder, you then are four miles away from the lightning. You can also see a graph here of the situation. And if you notice, it has an appearance of being linear. It is a line. It goes through 0, 0, and it proceeds with a slope of 1 fifth. Notice our equation, d equals 1 fifth t. So as we progress through today, I want you to see if you can see a relationship between the slope and our value for k. Before we continue our study of a direct variation function, I would like to look at slope. We studied that in geometry last year in 8th grade and in algebra in 7th grade. Remembering that slope of a line is the rate of change of y with respect to x. So we have studied it and looked at the change in vertical distance. So how far is our line moving in a vertical distance versus how far it is moving horizontally. Another way to think about that now that we are thinking of things in terms of independent and dependent variables, we know our vertical movement is tied, toward our, tied to our dependent variable, and we know that our horizontal movement is tied to our independent variable. Then the last way I want to look at it is the way that you studied it in geometry and algebra is that the change in y values is y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. I have a little example over here that I just want you to walk, I want to walk through with you. What is the slope of a line through 9, 36, and 25, 100? If we follow our formula, our change in y values, 100 minus 36, over our change in x values, which are 25 minus 9. When we simplify that, we get 100 minus 36 being 64, 25 minus 9 being 16, and that simplifies to 4. So we know that the slope of our line with the points 936 and 25100 is 4. Now that we've finished our, finished our mini lesson on finding the slope of a line given two points, I want to go back to our table of values that was generated when comparing lightning and hearing thunder and how much time has elapsed and how far away the lightning is. I want to look at the points 10, 2 and 15, 3. 10, 2 is here on the graph, 15, 3 is here. Or these are the two points that are on the line. These are the two points from the table. Now I'm going to move down to this example in our lesson here. And we want to determine the slope of a line with the equation d equals 1 fifth t, where t is the independent variable time and d is the dependent variable distance. So if we use the same formula that we used in our example problem, and we take our two points that we used, 10, 2, or that I circled in the table, 10, 2, and 15, 3, if we take the change in y's, 3 minus 2, and the change in x's, 15 minus 10, gives me a, a change, or gives me a slope of 1 over 5. So the rate of change between those two points on our graph was 1 fifth. Also, um, so what I want to see, or want to talk about, is the connection that there is between the 1 fifth 
that we found as our slope and that this is a direct variation equation so that one-fifth is also standing for k. We have a theorem that's been given to us and that is the slope of y equals kx theorem and what that says is the graph of a direct variation function with the equation y equals kx has constant slope k. So what that's telling us is that k is also known as our slope. I would now like to take a moment to explore the relationship that our slope has with k. We know that they are the same. But I also would like to take a look at what our slope represents and how that looks on our graph. So I want you to first think about what happens when our value for k is positive. Notice the graph of y equals 2x has a positive slope of 2 and that's this blue line here. And the slope of y equals 3 fourths x also has a positive slope. They both, both slopes rise from left to right in an upward motion. So they both are positive. But notice the value of 2 is larger than 3 fourths and that has a steeper slope. Now let's go and look at our negative values down here. We have a y equals negative 2x and a y equals negative 3 fourths. If we look at the slope of these lines, those have a, uh, a rise of 2 and a run of 1, but it's in a negative direction here, and a rise of 3 and a run of, I'm sorry, I was drawing my arrow on the wrong line here. This one has the rise of 3 and a run of 4, but in a negative direction. So when it has a negative slope, it has a movement upward from right to left. But still, when we look at the absolute value of the negative 2, it has a steeper slope than the absolute value of 3 4. So what we say then is our slope, the absolute value of our slope, the larger that value, the steeper the slope. So I have a, uh, a set of information to the right here, as you can see my pen moving, my arrow moving. You will see this information in the next few lessons summarizing all the different types of variation problems and what they look, graf look like graphically. So let's just summarize what a direct variation equation looks like when it's a direct variation to the power of 1. Notice I just put a little red 1 there even though we don't usually put that I just to, to make note that we are that you are aware that it's to the power of 1. So y equals kx said in words y varies directly as x we look at our graphs here and they're graphs of a line so a direct variation to the power of one is um, a graph of a line notice the lines are going through the origin of zero zero right here when the value for k is greater than zero it has a positive slope or it moves upwards from left to right when our slope is less than zero we say it has a negative slope and it moves upwards from right to left the other piece that is very important to, to look at when we're looking at direct variation functions is our domain and range. Notice these are lines and there's nothing that's not, there are no limitations in a horizontal or vertical direction so we know that the domain and range is a set of all real numbers in this direct variation situation or in all direct variation situations. I would like you now to continue your study of the Lesson 2-4 by completing the calculator activity that is pictured here. It's also in your reading in Lesson 2-4. And I'd like you to bring that to, to the next class. When saving it, just save your document as the 2-4 activity and we'll, we'll work with that in class. Since this video was relatively short, I also would like you to, to take the opportunity to do the covering re reading problems numbers 1 through 4 and 7 through 9 from this lesson 2-4 and also bring those to the next class. This concludes lesson 2-4.